Our first international travel after the loss of Poppy was the Maldives. We opted to visit two different islands, first Digura and then Mafushi. We didn't do lots of planning for that trip, and we opted for Digura, an inhabited island of Alif Dal Atoll, where whale sharks are year-round residents. For a long time, we were looking at luxurious hotels in the Maldives, but in the end, we opted for a more local experience on a budget. And Digura looked perfect for that. Digura means Long Island, and it is one of the longest islands, if not the longest, of the Maldives. It has the longest bikini beach with approximately 2 km length. Plus, the island is further than other local islands where tourists can get, making it uncrowded and perfect to be alone in paradise. But enough for now, let's start from the beginning of the adventure in Mali Airport. So how easy was it uh, to get the speedboat to Digura? Why would it be hard? Well, I don't know. It, it was, was super easy. easy. Just ask your accommodation uh, to book you. They will tell you a booth number, you go to the booth, and then you wait the seaboat. So the speedboat was super easy to manage. Plus, we paid in our accommodation, which was really convenient and the same price as online. It takes two to three hours to reach Digura by speedboat, they are daily departure at 11 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Return boat from Digura to Mali Airport are at 6.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. But be aware that the time changes on Friday, so always ask your accommodation. The speedboat to Digura costs 60 US dollars per person per way. The other option are either to take a domestic flight from Mali Airport to Mahamigili Airport with flying for 20 minutes, and then to take a boat to Digura for 15 minutes. That option costing 175 USD per way per person. Or to take a seaplane from Malé to Safari Atoll platform for 30 minutes, and then to take a boat to Digura for 10 minutes. One way, one person costing 250 USD. For us, the speedboat was the perfect choice. It was comfortable, there even was a complimentary boil of water, and we got to see dolphins on the way. It's there that we also saw the first overwater villas that stand at some of the Maldives postcards. And when we arrived on land, we received a little surprise. We were welcomed by someone from our accommodation and got a free ride to it. I always wanted to ride in one of those in China. <laughs> it's quite popular here. Adventure starts. Ah, they are exactly like in China. I've always wanted to ride in one of those. Oh, there is Mini Mart here. Thank you very much. Oh. Wow. That's super nice. Yeah, so this is Digura. So this is literally how the island is. Uh -huh. So that's north and that's south. So the island is quite long. It's one of the longest islands in Maldives. Mm -hmm. It's around 4.5 kilometers in length, but the width is quite narrow. It's around 800 meters at the widest part. It's around here uh -huh. where we live. And uh, this is the sunrise and sunset. So sunrise is over here uh -huh. and sets over there. Okay. And uh, yeah, this part of the island is where everybody lives. So all the locals, guests, and everybody lives in this part of the island. Okay. So here, Bikini San Martin is not allowed, but rest yeah. of the island is just jungle and beaches on okay. both sides. It's our Bikini Beach. Okay. So we got one of the biggest Bikini Beaches in the whole Maldives as well. Alright, yeah. Oh, on both sides? Yeah, both oh, cool. sides, including Sandbank at the very tip of the island. Have, yeah. you, have you heard about the Sandbank at the tip? Uh, yes, that's uh, it. Yeah. That you can walk on it and yeah. it's like... Yeah. Uh, it will be connected to the nearest resort. Yeah. 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 
and for snorkel and swimming we would recommend you to use the sunset side or the lagoon side which is this side of the island okay because here we have very nice coral gardens where you can snorkel from beach uh -huh. and the ocean is much calmer and it's much safer as well because it's the lagoon so it gradually gets deeper all right uh, but this is the ocean side and here is there will be a wave break so we do not recommend anybody to go beyond the wave break alone because it's very deep high current and it's okay. the ocean side of the island all right yeah yeah, but you can still use the beach and the shallow waters of the here, mm -hmm. which is fine completely. Yeah, yeah, that's about the island. And uh, so at the hotel, uh, we have complimentary snorkeling equipment for you guys. So it will be at the end of the road. There is a wreck okay. where you can find fins, mask, and snorkel oh, for okay. you guys. Yeah. So at the, uh, every day you can take it for the island uh -huh. uh, with our bicycles as well. So we got bicycles just outside the hotel. All right. So at the left side of our hotel, we got the bicycle park where you can find bicycles, which is complimentary as well. Oh, so cool. please do explore uh -huh. and use the maximum for your three days on the island. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. We then got information about breakfast food in the accommodation, tours and things to do in and mostly out of the island. It was then time to discover the room where we will be staying for the next 3 nights. The hotel, despite being in the small town, has an amazing garden in it. Each of the rooms has its own little terrace with a sitting and laying area. We must say that we love this room and it was super comfortable. The AC worked really well, the bathroom was great and the outdoor shower was super cool. And in case you are wondering what's that sound in the background, it's the call to prayer as the Maldives is a Muslim country. However, it wasn't disturbing at all. The room also came with lots of amenities, such as water, coffee, tea, mosquito repellent, beach towel, even a beach bag. They also wear bath robes, a safe, a torch, mini fridge, and even Netflix on the TV. Plus, Wi-Fi was really good. So in case you are wondering where we stayed, it was at a boutique hotel called Seaside Digora, and we would so recommend it. As it was getting late and we were tired from all the traveling, we stayed in and had dinner in our accommodation. The host also told us that a whale shark and menta tour was taking place the next day, so we opted to join it. The next morning started with some rain, but that didn't last too long. We then headed for breakfast, where we opted to get some fresh fruit and granola. It was really yummy. Once our tummy full, we still had time before the adventure start, so we enjoyed coffee in the terrace in front of our room. Later, we were picked up by the electric taxi of the island and then boarded our ship for the day. Us and another group of three actually joined another group that dive in the morning and we are now going snorkeling. Our first snorkeling was with Menta. Once on site, we jumped in the water and went looking for the Menta. We found one, but it was pretty deep. It was cool seeing the Menta, but we weren't the only one that wanted to see it.
we stayed there for a while and then headed back to our boat. Once everyone on board, the adventure continued toward the next knocking spot. While we transit to our next stop, let's talk about the boat we were on. It was actually based on the traditional Maldivian design and was quite comfortable, as it was actually quite big. There even was a shower on it and a top deck to enjoy the views. But the real bonus was the toilet. We also got free drinks, such as water, juice, tea and coffee, and even some snack. We didn't know it and it was quite a surprise to have all those amenities, especially the little sandwiches that were served while looking for the whale sharks. Cruising in the Maldives is nice, and we got to see many other waters villa and private island. Unfortunately, so far, there were no whale sharks. There was one earlier, but it dived. I believe it's because there were too many boats and people around. So the guys on our boat launched their drone to try finding another one. In the meantime, we saw a bunch of dolphins, that was super cool. As they couldn't find any whale sharks, they opted to go for another snorkeling point. That time it was only our boat, and we must say that we had such an amazing time there. But boy, how hard it is to stay long underwater. It was beautiful there. We saw lots of fishes, a turtle, and even some small black tip reef sharks. We actually stayed there for a while, as our team was still flying their drone looking for a whale shark. In the end, they couldn't find one, but we had such a great time. And one piece of advice, put lots of sun cream and even a t-shirt while snorkeling, because that day we burnt. So, after that, we headed back to Digura. Now, if we are talking about the cost, the Manta and Whale Shark snorkeling cost 150 USD per person. But, as we didn't see one of them, it cost us 120 USD per person. Oh, yeah. 
Once back in our hotel, we discovered that we could wash our feet in front of our room. This is just too cool. <laughs> After stopping by the supermarket next to our accommodation, we took two bikes and headed for the tip of Digora. Riding a bike in Digora is amazing and one of our favorite things to do. We especially love the jungle part, where lots of lizards are on the road, but where you have to be aware of the falling coconut. One thing also that's really nice is that it's almost impossible to get lost on the island as there is only one road going to the tip. Unfortunately, you will also notice some construction and a bit of trash along the road. To reach the tip of the island, we left our bike at the end of the road, no need to even lock them, and walked the last part. The tide was high, but there still was some sandbank that we could reach. It was nice to see and we promised ourselves that we will come back one morning there. I even flew the drone until the next island, where a private and luxury hotel is located, called Lux. On Lotai, you can even walk all the way there, but are not allowed to enter the other island. So Tina, how was your day? Uh, it was interesting. Oh, it's not the world. It was oh, amazing. Yeah? Yes. Even though it started with uh, heavy rain and yes. thunderstorm? Well, not really thunderstorm. It was thunderstorm. It was boring. But it was... Um, the rest of the day was beautiful. And how was the organization of uh, that day? <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting because... Uh, it was... <laughs> That was my feet where I had a blister. I'm sorry. So organization it's interesting because I'm French from Strasbourg so I work like a German so I'm really square. And whatever they ask, you ask, well they don't really know. Like, well they go with the flow which know. is also there is a big um, um, advantage of it. You know, you are in the moment and you go with the moment which I appreciate. So, um, uh, when we asked about the, this uh, experience, they didn't know anything about <laughs> it seemed like that, but then in the end it was, uh, uh, it was really nice. Yeah. We got like uh, included um, lunch, tea, coffee, um, water. water, yeah, some little biscuits, yeah. and uh, so in the end, and they were very um, caring. Uh, I lost my fins, so <laughs> I got a guy that was helping me with that. So yeah, I think um, in the end, uh, everything went, uh, let's say, smoothly.
So Tina, how was the attempt of uh, withdrawing local currency? Going. Fail! <laughs> yeah, there is one ATM on the island of Digoa, which and is guess cool. guess what? Doesn't work! Yeah, it doesn't work. So... But then we went to the supermarket, <laughs> to yeah. the really little market, and uh, we we changed the euros there. Yeah, they prefer dollars, so yeah. the rate uh, that we got was one euro for 16. 16. I don't know if they were honest or not. We didn't check uh, beforehand. Uh, and if so it would have been dollar, it would have been... One dollar for 15.5, no? Which is a better rate, no? 15.45. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, which is better because of the... Oh, because like... Uh, parts everywhere. I mean, uh, leaves shaped... Uh, Heart. Heart shaped. Oh, well, well, anyway. We are on the island. We are on the island with with five. Well, that was uh, five years ago. Five hundred people. No, no, it's seven hundred. And people. now it's seven hundred fifty, and plus tourists like one thousand. And they have even American family living there. They are very proud of it. <laughs> mm. Isn't it uh, seven hundred fifty plus seven hundred fifty altogether one thousand five hundred inhabitants? With tourists? Hmm, I'm not sure. I thought it's around uh, 1,000. Altogether? Yeah. No, 1,500, I think. Okay, 1,500 with tourists. So you double the population, basically. Yeah. Hmm. Still kind of like uh, a village. Yeah. Like, uh, very traditional. And uh, I like it, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's super nice, yeah. Yeah, I prefer this than a uh, villa on the uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a uh, fancy schmancy It's never gonna experience it. Not our style, uh, we go local. Whale. Oh, there is whale here. Oh, yeah, here is the whale shark. Now we got a chance to see it. And we to touch it. Oh, it's well made. Oh. Well, the tip of the island was maybe a bit crowded, but the rest is like you're uh, oh, come on, crowded. all alone. They yeah, like crowded. 10 people, the people get crowded. I always forget that you cannot walk in bikinis everywhere. <laughs> yes, because the Maldives, it's a Muslim country. Then you have actually two types, uh, two type of beaches. Uh, well, bikini beach and no bikini beach, basically. So in the bikini beach, you can uh, go in the water, swim, be in bikini, sunbath, and do whatever you want. Uh, and then the no bikini beach, well, it's a no go. I mean, you can go, but you cannot be in bikini. Put my uh, No, I think all of this is still Bikini Beach. Ah, okay. yeah, yeah. And also, obviously, in town, all those area. So, basically, everywhere around town you can't, but after it's free, it's fine. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's part of Sunset. Yeah. Wow. That day, we hoped to catch Sunset, but it was a bit cloudy, yet still beautiful. To end the day, we bike back towards our accommodation, stop for dinner at Hermit's restaurant. The food was good and we got ourselves two alcohol-free beer, as there isn't any alcohol allowed on Digora. I <laughs>
Yeah, we're a blue bit of this. Huh? Then the next morning, we woke up to a beautiful blue sky. After applying with quito repellent, we went for breakfast. That started with fresh juices and fresh fruits. And today for breakfast we are having a traditional Maldivian breakfast, which is called uh, masumi, <laughs> and it's um, um, tuna with coconut and uh, chapati bread. We then got two bikes and headed to the Bikini Beach side of the island. Our goal today is to snorkel and find a turtle. That's why we opted to get to the Bikini Beach near Turtle Point. We found a nice and shady place on the beach where for most of the time, we were all alone and just saw a few people passing by. It was amazing. We spent the morning enjoying there. watching seaplanes going to the nearby resort. Making new friends with the local community. Found a monkey! <laughs> yes. And went snorkeling a few times.
So those are three essential things you need in Maldives. Mosquito repellent, uh, SPF for the body and face, and SPF for your pretty lips. I saw a whale shark. Yeah? No. <laughs> and no turtle. What did you see? A lot of fishes. Water is coming passage to us. Around 1 p.m. we went for lunch in a restaurant nearby that was called Aveli where we had a fruit juice, a tuna salad and vegetable fried noodles. It was yummy in our tummies. In the afternoon we went back toward the tip of the island where beaches are wider but without reef enjoying some more of the calm Maldivian waters and exploring some more of the island. I see a whale shark in the ocean. It's a Yugoslavian one. It came from far, far, far away. We spent uh, the holidays here. <laughs> but then we decided to go back to Turtle Point. As the tide was now high, the beach was much smaller. Yet we found such a cool and hidden spot. we weren't yet discouraged and decided to go snorkeling one more time. We were set on finding the turtle. And guess what? Perseverance paid out.
Yao. That's it. <sighs> we saw our turtle. Mission accomplished. Uh, well. And we followed the turtle and he brought us to the lava fishes. <sighs> we then rested some more and then headed back to our accommodation for a shower and an aperitif. Perfect timing on our side as it's starting raining after such a beautiful day. To end the day, we had dinner and then watched a little something. For our last morning, we woke up early and went to the tip of the island. We had just missed sunrise, but the streets were so quiet. It's insane how actually all of this is covered during the high tide at night. The tide was low and we could see the sand bank connecting the Gura to the other island. We walked a bit around, jumped in the water and relaxed in such a peaceful environment. We then headed back to our accommodation for breakfast, but on the way Tina's bike broke down. Thankfully we weren't too far. Did you derail your bike? And we can't put it back together. <laughs> Masuni? Masuni. <laughs> so you have a Masuni and I have and vegan one. vegan Masuni. After breakfast, we went one last time to the beach. Snorkel one final time. Chilled in the warm water one more time. And enjoy until the end the heaven that is Digura. Tina, there you are. Look at what I found. A mermaid here. Ah, you are my ear.
Once back to our accommodation, we packed our stuff and took a shower. We just escaped the rain. Ah, the last piece before the boat. Well, at least like that. If you have a lot of waves, you won't be sick. <laughs> All right, now if you are talking about the cost, our three night stay in Nigura cost us altogether 930 euro, with the major cost being our accommodation at 373 euro, the return speedboat 225 euro, the snorkeling trip around 225 euro, and all the food for about 107 euro. Later in our trip to the Maldives, we found a way to reduce that cost by actually starting by the island of Mafushi and taking the whale shark snorkeling trip from there, which would save us one way with the speedboat and where the snorkeling trip would be cheaper. But we will tell you more about that later. Bye bye room. Bye bye room. Yeah, I think we're gonna have the room. <sighs> bye bye seaside digura. We had a blast. And we would have stayed two more days. Bye bye. Bye, bye bye. And it was time to get to our speedboat back to Mali. Next stop. Let's take a boat. Go to another island, yeah. Mafushi. So first to Mali and then to Mafushi. For two nights there. Even though I would uh, stay here. <laughs> yeah, me too. Now that we've seen that island, yeah, definitely would stay here on the boat. Yeah, we'll come and back. And skip Mafushi, yeah. <laughs>